a big deal for the Okies and Arkies. This is Woody's business card. KFED. Uh, There's his telephone number if you want to call him. Yeah. The dustiest of the dust bowlers. Big City Ways. But this song is an unusual song in many ways. It's a song that no one really knew about. No one knew about it because no one knew it had ever been recorded. And what happened was the story on this is kind of interesting. Um, but first of all, the, the, the song itself has to do with the culture clash of the Okies and Arkies coming to the big city. And, and also the temptations they face. If you look at the lyrics, you'll see. Wrong, wrong side, sorry. Okay. Oh, it's just, I, I, forget, I forget what I'm using here. I'm using a pointer. Okay. I, I'm going nuts with the technology. Okay. Brother John moved to town. He rented a flat and settled down. He brought his wife and his kids along, but $15 don't last long. You begin to see the problem. But look at this, too. Liquor store is right next door. Got his wages and some more. Mortgage company got his car to finance man his furniture. He's getting them big city ways. <laughs> Youngest son's got an uptown honey, but now he's paying alimony. <laughs> these are problems that people actually, I mean, these are real life problems that people face when they came from, these people came mostly from, from counties and towns that were dry. They didn't have alcohol. I mean, it was illegal. You could probably find it. But here, you, the liquor store is right next door. So that's a whole different deal. And sa same thing with a lot of other things, like buying on credit. What, what is that? Oh, really? Oh, we, we pay later. Okay. <laughs> but they didn't really understand these things. They made, they made mistakes, like naturally a lot of people maybe would. And the same thing with relationships with people. I mean, people would come around, they were more sophisticated, and, and a lot of the Okies and Narkies would make bad decisions, including maybe getting married or whatever, or having a divorce. So um, these are some of the things that they talk about in it. Um, also, there's an interesting re reference to something here that I want to see if, if you know what this one. He's, the landlord gave him so much grief, he got Sammy on relief. He got him a job on the WPA, woke up to eat about twice a day. What does that mean? Got him a job on the WPA, woke up to eat about twice a day. What does that mean? Any ideas? Anybody know what the WPA was? Works Progress Administration. What did it do? Gave people jobs, okay? Gave people jobs. And what were those jobs sometimes called by some people? Boondoggles. Woke up to eat about twice, got a job on the WPA, woke up to eat about twice a day. In other words, he was sleeping on the job. And waking up to eat twice. So even in, even in Guthrie's early, even his attitudes about the WPA, are like what a lot of people said, those are just make work jobs. Those aren't real jobs. A lot of people, people that didn't have them said that they were make work jobs. Yeah. People that had them said, I'm glad I got them. A subsequent version of this song by Guthrie, remember I told you how he changed his lyrics? It says, got him a job on the WPA, got laid off the other day. Now the person who was sleeping on the job has become a victim who got laid off. You see how Guthrie's lyrics are changing to reflect his changes in his political philosophy. I found that kind of yeah. interesting. This, this record was found, this is a record nobody knew about. Why? Because it was done in LA. Everyone knew about Guthrie's records that were first made, Victor Records, Dust Bowl uh, Ballads, uh, about the Dust Bowl, uh, RCA Victor, uh, and then the records that he did that you heard, the ones from the uh, Library of Congress. And people knew about those, and they also knew about the ones that, that were done subsequently uh, with Moash. But they didn't know about this one. And these records, there were four of these songs that were recorded on Presto. Presto were early types of records. They were red colored, but they were thick. And, and w what we think is that Guthrie sneaked into the radio station and recorded these four songs. Uh, and those four songs were found in a, a very interesting and sort of unknown library 
back to libraries again in, in South Los Angeles. Anyone ever heard of the Southern California Library? Yeah. No, you haven't heard of it. You've heard about it. Okay, Southern California Library, 62nd and Vermont. Okay. In the, in the, in the 19, late 1940s and 1950s, the LAPD had a, a group called the Red Squad. The Red Squad's job was to look for communists. There were many of them, and they had to find them all. Okay, and so they would find they would find people and who were who they knew were communists, and they would say, you know, we're going to talk to your employer unless you give us the names of other people that are communists. Because we need to have all their names. So they would get the names, and then they would go to their homes, and they would interview them. And while one was interviewing them, another would go and look at their bookshelves to see what they were reading. And that could tell you a lot. How many people had Marx, Lenin, Engels sitting on their bookshelf? Not too many people. So what did people do in LA who were faced with this problem? They wanted to find a place to put their books. So they had a guy on 62nd in Vermont, and he had a warehouse. And all the books from all the people in LA that were afraid that something might happen to them were delivered down to 62nd in Vermont. And there they sat. Huge collection. Many never came back to get those books. So friends of mine, when I was uh, teaching and, and doing research at the University of Wisconsin on my PhD, there, were some, there, were, there was a, a couple that worked there, and, and one of them uh, was hired at the UCLA to head the, the, uh, the um, one of the institutes that did all the oral histories. And his wife, Sarah, decided that she could convert this place into a, um, a library because it had all these books and it had all this, all this material. So it became kind of a community-based library. Well, in that library, Peter LaChapelle, who was writing his PhD dissertation in the history department at SC, who was writing on country music in LA, discovered these records. And these records were in the Harry Hay collection. Harry Hay collection, he found these four, these four uh, recordings. One of them was Big City Ways. What's interesting about Harry Hay uh, is that Harry Hay uh, lived, grew up in LA, went to school at LA High, went to college at Harvard, came back to LA, uh, became active in the Communist Party, he was the education director for Los Angeles. But he, he and when he was, was the education director, he organized a, a, a people's college for, for people who were older probably than high school and maybe even older than college, but it would be a people's college and you could go to the learning classes. He did a class called Music Appreciation. And he brought Guthrie in, and Guthrie went in and they recorded these songs, and then they played them at the Music Appreciation Days, and they ended up in Harry Hill's collection. Harry Hay. One thing about Harry Hay that's interesting is that Again, as I mentioned, as a young man, he was a communist, and he was a very activist type person. Um, he was also a homosexual at a time when people didn't really come out. And he, like other people who were homosexuals in the party, had to leave the Communist Party because it was so dangerous for them. They would be caught, they would be threatened with uh, telling their employers, they would be fired, uh, and, and they would go to jail. And they would um, also have to give the names of other members. So Harry Hay and others left the party. But he became politically active and started a group called the Manasheen Society. And that was the first organization to defend the rights of homosexuals in America, started by Harry Hay. It's kind of an interesting oh, story. Started here in LA. Big city ways. Let me just check the key here. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
he would go there a lot of times. Um, a lot of times he would go there at, in, in the evening and he would play at different places outside and, and play for chips and get extra money that way. And sometimes he would stay there and sleep and crash in, in inexpensive housing. And, um, but as a result, he kind of got to know a lot of people in Skid Row. And he had an interesting um, perspective on those people. And he wrote a song, one of the songs that I told you, Big City Ways, one of those songs we also found was one called Skid Row. This is a drawing they did of Skid Row, by the way. And you see it, you know, it's a kind of, it's the kind of drawings that he would do. So you see the people, they're, they're kind of, they have some issues, it seems like. There's a lot of them, and they're all kind of walking around, and there's a That's funny. royal palace, and there's a place for pots that you can get, you can sleep there. And here he is with one of his signs, he's got Woody and his guitar singing his own song. Dedicated to Skid Row and the Dust Row, Dust Bowl refugees. And what I found, although that song, Skid, Skid and Arrive and Skid and Arrive and Skid Row, was really not a very good song. It was a song that, I mean, he probably wrote it in 10 minutes. It wasn't a very good song, but when I read his autobiography, which is what this from, you can't see it, but this is uh, Woody Guthrie's autobiography. And you see in this area, you'll see some very interesting things about the people, about the people on the Skid Row. And it was so interesting, this listing of the types of people that were there that were so diverse, not just the one certain type of people, but a lot of different types of people. And I was so blown away by it that I took the lyrics from his autobiography, uh, and I, I took those and I applied them to, uh, to the tune that he had done in his, I've been skipping around on Skid Row. And so, um, here's that song. So, I think it's hard for you to see, but I'm going to, I'm going to basically use these, these as lyrics in this song, just itemizing all the different types of people on the skid row. It has so many words that I have to look at the words because I don't, I've never memorized it. In fact, I've only sung this twice before, so who's the third audience to hear? I don't know if that's good or I've been skidding around on skid row. Well, I've been skidding around on Skid Row. It's the skiddiest street in this town. I've been skidding up and down. I've been skidding around on Skid Row. I know you people I see here on the skid. You know me and you call me kid. Guitar busker, joint hopper, tip canary, kitty box band. I've been skidding around on Skid Row. There's movie people dead and there's stew bums. Steelers, dealers, sidewalk stealers. Con man, flat boots, reefer riders, dover, smokers, boiler ciders. I've been skidding around on Skid Row. There's sailors, whalers, bar flies, brass railers. We got spittoon tuners, fruit cheap pruners. Honest people, fakes and spiders, vamps and bleeders, three way riders. I've been skating around on Skid Row. We got saviors, saved in side street singers. Whorehouse hunters, doorbell ringers. Honky Tonk and Whiskey Setters, Time Ball Spent Through, Best for Betters, I've been skating around on Skid We got Black Mailers, Gin Soaps, Comers and Goers. We got Foot Group Girls, Bad Girls, Teasers and Whores. Cowers, Bad Guys, Tools and Stitches, Nice People, Bastards and Sons of Bitches, and I've been skating around on Skid Fair, square, and honest folks, and greedy, sneaky people. Summer amongst all the Skid Row skidders. Cisco, Houston, and I, some for our tips and beers, and I, I, I'm skidding around on Skid Row, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm skidding around on Skid Row. You know, because he talked about the people on Skid Row. He said, you know, the people on Skid Row, they, they're dealing with issues. He said, but you know, you got some of them that are on the way down. You got some of them that are on the way up. You got some of them that are in the middle that are just trying to hang on. 
So he added a, an element of humanity uh, to the Skid Row population. Yeah, first of all, that was unbelievable. That was, that was phenomenal how you took the descriptions and added them. I heard that uh, in the Hayes collection before. Oh, the old one? Yeah, did you also add the Cisco Houston line? No, that's in there. That's because it, in, the, in the autobiography, he talks about how he and Houston were down there hanging around looking, trying to get money. That was in his original recording of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, this may be one of the best country songs never recorded. <laughs> um, it's uh, Hoover'sville, and this is Guthrie, you know, you would say Hoover'sville, but Guthrie is different, so he calls him Hoover'sville. He means plural, Hoover'sville. What were Hoover'sville? What, what were they? They're practically refugee camps from uh, people that were out of work from the Depression. Yeah, they were basically like, you know what they were like? They were like the encampments that we see in L.A., except they were all stuck in one area outside of town. I think the police didn't let you set up tents and live on the streets, okay? We have, we've had court orders that, you know, permit us or force us to, to, to do that. Uh, but they didn't have that. So a lot of people lived in these places, and they would a lot of times they would be set up right next to dumps. Do you know what dumps are? Does anybody remember what a dumps are? I mean, because I've, I've seen people say, what's a dump? Well, a dump is where you might dump all the stuff you don't want. Yeah. But if you're a person who doesn't have anything, you might want to live next to the dump to take out the stuff that you might want. And then when you have to leave and leave all your stuff behind, you're just leaving it to the dump to the next guy who maybe could use it too. So it's a kind of a recycling, if you want to call it that way. And so he wrote this book about the way the, pe the people lived there. In the summer of 38, he spent a lot of time in the Central Valley, and for the first time he lived with, uh, with people like that. Uh, I really like the song. Um, I don't know.